Well, good morning, and I'm pretty stoked to be in San Diego. Unfortunately, it's only for a few hours, but that's life. Um, I'm, I'd like to talk today about open source. Jim did a great job this morning of describing how open source is just fundamentally changing the industry. I call it the innovation engine for the industry, and it's not just creating technology, but it's helping entire industries just transform and completely change how they operate, how they do business, and that's really amazing. Um, open source, to me, starts with a shared vision. You can't really collaborate on something if you don't know what you're working on together. Shared vision, I think, is key. Obviously, collaboration is a big part of what we do, so that's working together to achieve this shared vision. To me, and a critical component in this is trust. As community members, we're people, we're humans, we're developing human trust relationships with each other. Trust comes with openness and transparency. I think it's a really fundamental part of what we do when we build a community. My favorite part of an open source community is the ability to just get stuff done. And it's, I call it initiative. Uh, and what that means to me is showing up and doing something is valued. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your background, the contribution of code, documentation, bug reports, uh, creating community meetups. All of these things are, are important parts of the community. And all that is required to do that is initiative and showing up. Another important part of a community to me is diversity. I think diversity has a couple of dimensions. One is the people. So make sure we have the broadest different kinds of ideas and, and, and mindsets represented. The other, from a more technical point of view, is the types of problems that we solve. So a great project, uh, I think, that sustains itself over time is capable of supporting a diverse set of workloads or different problems. I think another key hallmark for open source is the notion of incremental improvement, whether it's fail fast and realize that that's not working, or whether it's release early, release often. Uh, you, know, you hear more and more about it today in, in differing worlds, whether it's DevOps and agile development, or whether it's ways that whole organizations are thinking of, of operating themselves, not just building code. So I think that's a really important piece. It gets more to organic growth and evolution, some of what you saw earlier with uh, the, the poet example. And I think this is a really key feature of open source development communities. So ultimately, together, I think we're building a diverse community to write and maintain software to solve problems that users care about. Sounds pretty simple. And well, uh, we've done an amazing job of that. And so what you heard this morning was a bunch of examples of how the industry are changing. The industry is changing fundamentally. You look at a place like uh, GitHub, which has something they, they label themselves as having over 100 million Git repositories, over 40 million developers, and two plus million organizations. I mean, that's, those are staggering numbers. You look at some key large projects and the number of changes per day and the velocity of, of, of activity that happens within those projects. This is all staggering. And typically, Jim talks about the, the billions of dollars of, of transactions that are supported through all of this open source development. So you get the sense of the, the real commercial impact uh, you didn't get a chance to hear that today, but one of the things that I think is important is, is realizing that part of winning is with great power comes great responsibility. Like we have, we've done a lot, and I think we have to make sure that we continue to evolve throughout uh, all of this change and maintain some key features like that uh, transparency and trust and incremental improvements on organic growth as these key uh, tenets of how we operate together. So along the way, what's changed, I would say, fundamentally, uh, and, and I, I say this with intention to create a visceral re response, it's the corporatization of open source. Uh, now, is that a positive or a negative? I don't know. Maybe it's up for you to decide. The positive is all of that amazing industry impact that we're seeing. Uh, the negative, I think, is how do we onboard a whole new set of constituents, both contributors and users, into a world that we have really evolved over the past decades? I, personally, I've been involved for about uh, 20, 25 years. So this, this is a long time uh, in, in coming. 
So we have a, a, a whole different set of dynamics. These are industry-wide dynamics. There's a lot of money at stake, which changes be people's behaviors. And I think we should be able, one, to acknowledge that, and two, really be mindful about how we carry forward to ensure that the core qualities of open source sort of withstand the test of success. Uh, I think success also, you, you see that kind of great responsibility, understanding from a user point of view what a project delivers is important. And, you, and you know, we, we just learned about another type of vulnerability with uh, the, the issue with Ruby Gems. This kind of high profile security concerns is something that will continue to uh, matter hugely to the industry. If we're, if we're impacting and, and changing the entire industries, we need to make sure we do that in a responsible way and help, help people who are trying to use our software uh, to consume that safely. Another piece that, that I like to point out is there's a fundamental distinction between a project, an open source project, community-based development effort, and a product, a commercial effort. Uh, maybe fundamentally, one is about community creation, it's about the technology, it's about really evolving, uh, bringing features on into a software platform and evolving that platform architecturally soundly so that you can sustain it over time. Not necessarily creating a commercial relationship with the user, certainly having relationships with users is important. Uh, on, the prod on the product side, uh, there's all these things about life cycle management and stability that, that's uh, independent from the upstream life cycle. There might be integration around other products and ultimately clarity of when we're talking about a project and when we're talking about a product I think will be really helpful for people who are trying to consume what we're building and understanding where it's uh, in the bleeding edge and not yet mature and understanding where it's actually a commercially supported variant of, a, of an open source project. Another area that's related to this is certifications. And there's a bunch of different meanings for certifications. I think this is an example of blurring the lines between the commercial side of software activity and the community side of software activity. Protecting the trademark around a software project is really important because we have brand association with the quality of a project. Uh, understanding when you're doing certification to conform with a trademark versus certification to say this is a commercial activity and I know in my role I get requests from customers to say, give me one of those, and they're pointing at a certification stamp, which may or may not be relevant in the context of a commercial product. So I think that's a blurring of the lines between the community and the community development efforts and the commercial side of creating and, and, and selling and supporting software. So to me, I think the challenge ahead is really keeping those, those core values, those core tenets, uh, of what open source is, thinking about how we create projects, sustain projects. When we work within uh, foundations, understanding the difference between the marketing hype of hyping a project and the reality of what a project is capable of so that we're level setting with, with the industry what's, what's real and what's, you know, I think we'd be do, doing ourselves a disservice to overly hype software projects before they're really ready and mature. And, to me, this is the, the fundamental kind of interesting challenge that we have. I would call it open source 2.0 or next generation open source if I was in marketing and trying to give it a buzzword and a slogan. I suck at that, so I'll just say I think we're entering a new era of open source. It's not today. It's not as if it wasn't there yesterday, but we're, we're moving into this new era of open source. And uh, I, I actually sh have some concerns that if we don't pay attention to these things and work together as a broad community, uh, that we could lose sight of what's made us successful and transition into a new space where we lose those same core uh, capabilities and maybe lose some of that amazing success. Uh, so I'd love to continue the conversation. Uh, certainly there's Twitter and there's hallway tracks and if we get enough people who are interested in this type of discussion, uh, we could carry it on and, and make it a more formalized discussion. And that's really what I wanted to share with you today. Thank you very much.